Hello, I'm Jack Doherty. I'm an Irish porcelain maker who's living and working in Cornwall at the moment. And this is Garden House. It's a big stone Cornish house on the edge of the sea here in the fishing village of Mausel. It's my home and it's my studio. And I'd like to show you around, so please come inside. Garden House is a, a very integrated place. It's a home, it's also a studio, it's a place where I live and the place where I work. So there's a big crossover sometimes between the living space and the working spaces. This is a group of what I call guardian vessels. They have their origins in very ancient parts, prehistoric parts, things made at a time when people were using ceramics in an everyday sense, but also as a way of helping them journey into the next life and, and, and lives beyond. So there's a mixture of utility, usefulness, function, and a far more spiritual, emotional content to them. These are things which I construct from large pieces of clay. They're unusual for porcelain in one sense because they're sometimes quite big, they're sometimes quite heavy, they've been carved and they've been cut. They've been made in such a way that I want to show every single trace of making, every tool mark, every finger mark, and then the firing again at the end brings out the colour, the surface, and, and, and the textural quality of them. I mean, these are things which people almost, in a sense, automatically reach out for. They, they stretch out and they hold them in that sort of protective, comforting sort of way. I also make other things. I make this is a, a keeper form. I, I'm thinking here in a slightly more conceptual sort of way when I'm thinking about function in a different sense. The idea that ceramic forms can be containers of anything, if you like, really, but these are not made for keeping functional things. They're meant for keeping your kind of ideas and your secrets, placing things carefully, thinking, closing, holding. This is my porcelain studio. All of the porcelain pieces start their life here. First of all, by preparing the, the porcelain clay, kneading, wedging it, making it kind of smooth and even on this table. This is the wheel that I use. This is the starting point for probably everything that I make. Everything starts in, in one sense or other on the wheel. Sometimes it's changed, altered, cut, carved or marked in different ways. But that kind of motion of the wheel generating the beginning of the form is, applies to, to everything. These are my ingredients. And over the years I have stripped down the number of materials and the number of processes that I use. And I use, use just one clay, one single colouring material and a single firing. So I use porcelain, I use copper carbonate as the colouring material, provides all of the colours of my work. And it's interesting to me that both of these materials, the china clay that's used to make the porcelain and the copper carbonate, are part of the landscape here in Cornwall. They've been mined and produced here for many centuries. I love porcelain. It's a very, very beautiful, very pure, very sensual material. And very often in history it's been used to make forms which are very thin and very translucent because it has that quality. It's almost like glass when it's far out. But I don't care so much for that. I'm interested in the quality of light and colour that you can achieve with porcelain in a way that you can't with any other material. These forms are, I suppose, very simple in one way. They're based in the archetypal ceramic container forms. You know, I mentioned before about pots from prehistory made before art or craft, at a time when ceramics was an essential part of, of daily living. They're containers, always. And they show the softness of the porcelain clay with these rims that are turned over, made to contain whatever goes in here. It can be thoughts, ideas, or it can be functional things. I love the surfaces. I kind of start with this material and I cut into it. I will sometimes mark and draw onto the surface, making little marks that reflect movements, shapes, little ideas as I'm making. Bearing in mind that during the firing, 
every mark that I make on the clay is never covered. It's always revealed and always shown because of the soda firing. The inside space of these forms is for me sometimes the most important part of them. So I draw into that, I cut into it, I kind of give it its own sense and its own presence. So that when you pick these things up and you look inside, you're not looking at a blank space, you're looking at something that's been investigated, discovered and, and shown. Copper is a very volatile material that can produce a very wide range of colour depending on how it is fired in the kiln, the temperature that is fired to, and very particularly the, the kiln atmosphere. And what I do is, I don't use glaze conventionally. I make a slip, which is a liquid clay from the porcelain clay body that I use, mixed with 2% of copper carbonate, which is applied then in layers, building up the pattern on the outside by spraying the slip one layer on top of the other. The white areas where the slip is thinnest, the darker areas are where it's thickest. So there's an in-between range of colour. I build the layers of slip up, the pieces dry very thoroughly before firing, and I fire this to around 1260 degrees centigrade. And then I spray a mixture of sodium bicarbonate and water into the kiln area itself. So that this vaporizes within the kiln in the heat and it's, the vapor is carried through each piece and around each piece. It's like almost like water flowing through over stones in a stream. It kind of passes around, touches in some areas, misses in other areas, and it brings the color and the texture from the copper. It's taken quite a while to develop that process and I've been very aware and very mindful of the amount of energy and materials that we use when we're making things. So I've been reducing the firing temperature over the years, trying to find a way of producing great results but by using less fuel. My making process begins with the clay in a very soft, very fluid state. And through time, and through the different stages of making, it changes. It becomes slowly firmer, stiffer, harder, ending up at this point where it's drying out thoroughly, re re ready for firing. So it's a long process. It takes some time to make one of these things. I've got to be very careful to choose exactly the right moment to do each stage of the making. So what I've done is I've made a little film or I've put together a series of film clips to show you each of that process over a period of time. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed your short visit to my studio here in Mausel. And before I go, I want to say a very big thank you to the Loewe Foundation and to all of the team there for their help in making this short video, and also for giving me the opportunity to kind of show my studio to you. And I just want to say that I'm very much looking forward to the exhibition in Paris in the springtime, and I hope perhaps maybe I can meet one or two of you there.